Okay, today I want to talk about putting your design on your Casa Grande, Grande vessel. When you get your clay back today, it, this is now bisque, so you can tell that it's a different color. It's white instead of gray, and it is um, more permanent. At this point, if something broke, you could fix it with glue, but you would be able to turn this back into workable clay. So what you want to do is decide what your plans are, so refer back to your planning sheet, what you want to do for your designs, and then you're going to put at least two bands of design on your vessel. Now I started this a little bit. The first thing I did is I drew lines that go all the way around as my guidelines, and then I started to draw my design. You can see I'm doing my first design up here on this first layer. So I wanted to show you how to do the second layer from the beginning. So the first thing that you want to do again is to draw your guidelines. So you're going to do this with pencil and the nice thing about using this pencil is that it, when it goes through the kiln it actually gets burned up and disappears. So even if you don't outline these pencil lines precisely they will disappear on you. So I am doing my best to eyeball this and just slowly go around the vessel. It's very important that you do this in the beginning so that you have guidelines to get your design to line up. I've had students just start drawing their design and not do these guidelines and then they get to the end and they don't match up. So now I'm here at my last part. I want to make sure that these lines line up as best as I can so I have a little bit of space to make sure they line up. Now if I were to measure this, is this going to be exactly the same all the way across? No, it's not, but if you eyeball it, it looks pretty good. Now I, So this is going to be the top of my second design. Now I need to draw another line to be the bottom. Okay. So again I'm going to gauge the distance between this line and this line and slowly go around. It helps if you keep your hand on the vessel for support and it also is easier to do it if your vessel is smoother rather than rough. Okay, So I'm just slowly going around trying to do my best to make sure this distance stays the same. Now I'm getting close to where I started so I want to kind of think about getting these two lines to match up. Okay, And there you have it. All right, Now for this one I wanted to do number three here, this bottom one with the swirls. So I'm going to, I want them to look like S's. So I'm going to actually use this um, vertically to get my S drawn in first. S. And I'm just going to go around and get that part in. And I just, so I'm doing one backwards and then one forwards. Backwards S, and then a forwards S. It's just easier for me to draw this way, okay? And I want to also gauge how this goes all the way around. So I want to try and make sure that my patterns end up, oops, this one needs to be a little bit more curvy, kind of consistent. So now here's my next S. And I get, I have a space here that I could probably get two in, but I have one, which I think I'm going to, because this one is the right, this one is backwards, so I need to get a backwards one here. So I'm going to put them a little bit closer, maybe make them a little bit smaller, and then the correct S. Okay, so I got my S's all the way around. Now I can go back and then add the details. So I want this to have, I want this to be thick, so I'm going to draw an extra line around it so there's sort of a little bulb at the end, do the same thing over here, do a circle and then kind of go back and then I want this area to be thicker as well and I'm going to use both sides of this to fill in, okay? And then in between these where this space is, I'm going to put a little design that I've created, it's supposed to kind of look like a lowercase a and then on the top I'm going to put a cursive looking R, which also kind of ends up looking sort of like a bird. 
So I would just go around and do this whole thing, okay? And for the sake of time, I'm going to stop at this point with my drawing and show you how to continue painting, okay? So here, if I have this whole thing done, it might be a good idea, if you notice, I have little X's here for the areas that I plan to paint in. Because while you're painting, sometimes you don't necessarily think about all that stuff, okay? So you'll have a little container of the underglaze, and this you would be sharing with one person at your table, the one who sits at the same side of the table as you do. I call it your elbow partner. And then you're going to dip your brush into the glaze. You want to get the glaze on the brush, but you don't want the glaze to get on the metal part, the ferrule. Okay? And now I'm going to be painting, let's say I have this whole row drawn in, and I'm going to be painting, and I want to be able to support my hand so my brush is not all up here painting from above. That's really hard to be straight. So I need to start on this side and work my way towards the left because I'm left-handed. As right-handers, you would do it opposite. So when I do this, you want to make sure you're working on brush control. So I'm using the very tip. As I paint, you should probably not even see the bristles of the paint brushes bending. Okay. And the other thing I like to do when I put the brush down, I pull it along so I get a nice straight line. And now if my, my color is too light, then I need to re-dip and reapply. So I have a nice dark line. It's going to look kind of gray until it goes back in the kiln. Now over here, I'm putting, I'm painting this triangle in, so I want to outline it first. Again, pulling, pushing the brush down and pulling, getting my other lines. And you can change the angle of the brush so that you can see what you're doing. And then I can fill this in. Again, that's getting kind of light, so I would reapply and fill that in so it's nice and solid. Okay. If you have bigger spaces than I have, you may want to get a bigger brush. It's important that you use the correct tool for the job, but this is also a good practice in tip painting where I'm just using the tip of the brush, my bristles are not bending, and I'm taking my time to do my best work. Lots of dipping, you'll find that you dip your brush often because you're using such a small brush it can't hold very much. Okay, And then if you have lines that you want to show up, remember the pencil lines will disappear. So I'm going to paint this side and see what it looks like and if I have to add any more lines. I did paint this line above the top because that would have been an open space and I wanted it to look like it was within a, a band or a design. Okay. Again, tip painting. Taking my time, pulling it along the edges. You can do kind of the swiping at the inside area because you sort of have a buffer zone. Okay, but you don't want to, when you're doing lines, you don't want to do little brush strokes like this. It can be hard to have them line up all the way. I think it's a little bit better if you just lay the bristles down and pull it along. Okay, lay it down and pull it along. And by painting this shape here, I'm also working on making sure I have equal amounts of black and white. Often designs have too much white. You have to make sure that you use both because our vessels are so white, if we don't have very much black in there, it's not going to be as interesting to look at. Okay, And that is basically, oh, and then let me touch this up so that it goes all the way across. And that is basically how you do your underglazing.